Yeah, Greg Primack is the general manager of this Windsor Lancers team. And I won't say the year, but uh, a few years ago, uh, he was my very first color commentator in the Ontario Hockey League. Uh, we'll just say three dozen and leave it at that. 80s, <laughs> 80s style. All right, Michigan goes from uh, left to right here. And from the opening face off, it's Wayo back in his own zone for the Lancers as they play it out center ice. And the Wolverines will have to chase it. Seamus Casey will leave it in behind his own goal. And we're underway. Now Eric Portillo, he'll play the first half of the game, Fred, as uh, Brandon told us in that pregame show. And then they'll have Noah West come in. And uh, it's interesting. He said, we're not going to dress three goalies. Yeah, this season, uh, you'll see a lot of teams in the college ranks with three goalies. I've seen a three-goalie hat trick where a, a player for Ohio State actually scored a hat trick against uh, a team and had one goal against each goalie. We're going to have an icing call. We'll go back down into Michigan territory. Eric Portillo started every game last season for Michigan, leading them to the Frozen Four. And when he was asked this week why he came back, he said he would rather be over-prepared to be a pro than under-prepared, which is, you know, he, he's a very studious, analytical young man. And good for Eric Portillo. Now in line with uh, Gavin Brindley. Uh, Moyle on the right-hand side, the captain, along with uh, McGordy, right to McGordy. And the uh, Wolverines with Fantilli back in the zone. Now there are two Fantillis on the team. Luca plays defense. And of course, Adam, as Fred mentioned earlier in our pregame show, is up he's centering that number one line. Yeah, with Dylan Duke on the left side and Mackie Samuskevich on the right side. And Dylan Duke has changed numbers from 56 to 25 this year. Now he used to, uh, as uh, it goes to the goaltender, Torsia, he'll hang on. Oh, players come together. Little international greeting and behind the goal. Well, this Windsor team is made up primarily of ex-major junior players. And of course, they're going to protect their goalie. Torcha and uh, Nathan Torcha. Again, Al, I did games his father played in, who was also a goalie and a good goalie, too. Uh, Goaltending family, Italian family out of the Toronto area. Now we'll face off down in the Lancers zone. No score here. We're just underway in the first period of this exhibition game between the Lancers of the University of Windsor and, of course, our Wolverines. Going back to this Fantilli, Samuskevich, and Duke line. And here's Fantilli. He shoots. That was knocked away in front. Tarcha. Kind of looked like he got a glove hand on it as that puck stays in. Wolverines volley it over to Samuskevich out in front. Trying to go to the back door. And that pass across by Duke was knocked away and sent down the ice. By the way, this is a Michigan power play presented by DTE Energy with Matt McNamara in the box for the Lancers. Back into Lancer territory. And it's set down the ice by Dobrich. All the way down to the Michigan uh, zone. That's Jacob Truska. Usually you'd see Luke Hughes out here on the power play, but uh, Brandon Arado telling us pregame he's been given a maintenance day, so I wonder if he might be nicked up from a grueling uh, training camp. But Luke Hughes not available today. Now Sam Escavich trying to work his way back into Lancer territory with no score in the first. The game's first power play. And all the way back down the ice, Pertillo will steer it around the boards. Now Gavin Brindley, his uh, father played down uh, at the uh, Miami of Ohio University down in Oxford for four seasons. He was a defenseman and he wore 21. Now it's T.J. Hughes going to work in the corner. Flips it out to uh, Ciccolini. Eric will bring it down the boards. 
Ciccolini also sporting a, a different number of 93. He's just trying to find one that'll keep him healthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Ciccolini back over to uh, Casey, to Hughes. Now to Ciccolini. Here's a shot. Casey's shot. That was a high rise here over the top of the goal, and it's cleared down the ice. It's going to be fun to watch Seamus Casey work that blue line this season. Just 18 years of age out of Fort Myers, second rounder of the New Jersey Devils, one of three Devils prospects on the back end for this Michigan team with Ethan Edwards and Luke Hughes. Now we have a whistle stop as you play on the delayed offside calls. Marcus Stoppa is out on the ice, and of course, uh, his uncle Joey just came up to visit my old neighbor from Trenton, Joey Coriani, visiting all the way from California. He's here. His wife was here last year. Come up to say hi. As uh, Marcus Stampa will take the face off. That big body of his, and he won the draw. Got it back. And Keith Pearson will rifle it. Torcha stomps it in behind the goal. For the uh, Lancers who trying to bring it out of their own zone ahead the center, but the pass too far. So we're four minutes into the first period. No score. Nolan Boyle will send it in. Canadians already displaying a little physicality, aren't they? Which is what you expect from the Canadian universities. Yeah, although, uh, you know, the Canadian university system has changed. They're now allowed to to give scholarships and players who played major junior now have money given to them have by virtue of having played major junior so uh, the caliber of play much improved from you know we used to get those 12 15 one games back in the day now Portillo comes out plays it up the left hand side Shaw will keep it in for the Lancers he tips it into the corner that was Burt chasing it back there he's on with paradise for the Lancers but it ends up all the way down into Lancer territory. Duke on the forward check. But it's picked off the end boards by Burt. He'll play it out center. Now turning with it is Brindley. Brindley up the right-hand side with some speed. Comes into the zone. And he's trying to drop a pass back for the captain, but that just failed to click. Now here's uh, Casey trying to walk it in. And his shot was blocked and then cleared down the ice. So Brindley back to Truscott up on the right-hand side. The miss Casey with the pass. As Truscott will pick it up again. A little ragged play so far. There's going to be a penalty again uh, on uh, the Lancers for tripping. Mackie Samuskevich hauled down just outside his own blue line. Officials today, by the way, linesmen are Bill Hancock and Pat Richardson. The uh, referees, Jake Rakuki and Sean Fernandez. Sean Fernandez had a busy summer, worked the World Juniors, and he was uh, one of the referees for the gold medal game that went overtime between Canada and Finland. And one of their own linesmate partners is sitting up with us today, yeah. your son, Jesse. It's so good, Fred, to see him moving around like this. Yeah, Jesse out with, uh, I don't know if you call hockey a social outing for him. <laughs> Business like you and I. That goes to uh, Duke out in front. Sam Escavich fanned. He gets it back, though, on the top of the uh, near circle. Trying to send a pass through the slot. That didn't make it. It goes back to the point again. In they come. And Fantilli's shot was blocked. Now Duke in the left-hand corner. They get it back to Truscott. Move it out to the right-hand side. Here's Sam Escavich's shot. But it was blocked in uh, front of the uh, goal. There's no score in this game. Michigan's second power play. They were 0 for 1 as the shot. Walking in with Sam Muscavich, but he missed the top corner. Adam Fantilli will play it in behind the goal. Chuck on the penalty clock. A minute and 10 left. Here's Fantilli. Oh, the laser that went wide of the goal. He was going for that far top corner. Sam Muscavich coming down. Now Truscott. Here's a shot blocked in front. Again, as the... Lancers are blocking all kinds of shots for the point. Now it goes to Duke. He tried to feather one across. That didn't work. 
It was blocked again. Truscott over the left-hand side. Fantilli's shot. That got blocked. Adams got his own rebound. Over here on the right-hand circle. No score in the first. Michigan on the power play. Seven escape and scores! And they lead on the power play. one nothing. Six fifty-four, the time of the goal. Mackie Samuskevich. After Fantilli's shot was blocked, he'd been playing the left side. Took the puck over to the right side, bumped it back to Samuskevich, and he really changed the angle by at least a foot. There was traffic in front. That's Dylan Duke's role, and we know the shot that Mackie Samuskevich possesses. And no slapper, just a twisted wrister that beat Torsha. Blocker side just inside the post. Michigan one on a two on the power play now as they make the Lancers pay. And it comes uh, LaPointe. The little point sends it back. And that puck ends up on top of the net on a shot for the point by Keaton Pearson and ends up in the net, but the whistle had sounded. Oh, it's still on top of there. Well, but, if it's determined what Michigan put the puck on top of the net, it'll come outside, right? Yes. Although it was, a, I think it was a shot that went off yeah. the goalie, yeah. came up and, and nestled yeah. into the half moon of the netting. So face off, Torsh is right. Now for people that uh, will recognize the Draper name and the familiar number 33, right, Fred, as uh, Keenan comes out. Yeah, Keenan drafted a couple of years ago in the seventh round by the Red Wings. Played last year for the Chilliwack Chiefs in the BCHL. And don't hold it against him. Al. He played for a former Spartan there. Brian Maloney, remember him? I do. Done a good job and has coached that uh, Chiefs team for a while now and has produced a lot of good college players. So the, the uh, line now, Estapa is out with the Draper on one side and LaPointe on the other. So you got uh, the, the sons of two former Red Wings out there on the same line. As uh, Stephen Holtz out on the ice, it's good to see him. He got injured last year. Yeah, only had 11 games under his belt. Uh, collected five assists. Oh, that's a bad penalty there. As they stuck the knee out, took the point down. That can be dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, let's see if there's going to be more than a two-minute penalty on this one. The point seems to be okay, though, Fred. Yeah, that's good news because it was, as you say, blatant knee. The the trailing referee picked it up right away. I think they're going to give him a five. They're discussing. And it might be a good time to call a five-minute major on a play like that early in this game. Well, we had lengthy discussions pregame with the Big Ten Director of Officials, Steve Piotrowski. And he was telling us situations like this, just as Sean Fernandez has done, the previous play is under review, and that means they're going to take a look at it with an eye towards a five minute major. Slow it down, we'll see if the knee comes right out. Oh, yeah, it does. Le leading with the right knee was the that's player that's about to be penalized. Oh, that could be a career under. I mean, Dang that's just dangerous hit, and those are the hits in the NHL, in the Ontario Hockey League that most of the Lancers are products of. Uh, one of the reasons the gloves come off and fisticuffs ensue, of course, you can't do that here. And that's why you want to make sure that if it merits a five minute major penalty, that it is used as a deterrent. So nothing like that uh, would happen again. The player in question is Keegan McMullen. Got a major penalty. So Keegan McMullen, who just joined this Windsor team this week, 
His debut with the Lancers is short lived seven minutes and 48 seconds as he receives a five minute major. So that will give the Wolverines a third consecutive power play. They have the Mackey Samuskevich goal. And Michigan goes to work here again with Gavin Brindley at center. Well, they're unable to clear Michigan controlling. They go to T.J. Hughes is on that far side. Now to Ciccolini and uh, Seamus Casey. Back over the left-hand side. Again, it's Hughes. Hughes, what, almost 80 goals last year? Was that something like that? He scored in his sleep, I think. <laughs> now here's a shot by Brindley, but David shot didn't find the target. And the Lancers will clear it down the ice. Yeah, TJ, who's 66 goals in the regular season, 12 in league playoffs, and another six in the RBC Centennial Cup <laughs> national playdowns. <laughs> That's a lot of goals. That is. In any league. That's a good career for most people <laughs> when they play 10 years. Now it comes out to center ice. Dylan Duke sends it back. Jacob Truscott. Back to Duke. Samuskevich finds uh, Fantilli through the middle. Adam Fantilli, hard around. And they played, tried to get it back to the point, but it was uh, played away and out center ice by Grant Spence. Now back comes Michigan quickly on this uh, power play for five minutes, 334 left in it. They lead 1 0. Samuskevich is shot, and it was covered up right away by Torsha. Dylan Duke took a whack at Torsha as he had it covered. And as you have noted earlier, the Windsor Lancers are very, very protective of their net minder. I think Windsor's plan is the same as Brandon Dorado's, use two goalies. Their other goalie is six foot four, kind of Eric Portillo size, but Eric Portillo feels like the Maytag repair man right now, Al. <laughs> Loneliest guy in town. One shot through almost 10 minutes now. Now here comes uh, Luca Fantilli up to Granowitz. Grano comes in. He'll drop it in for Stephen Holtz. He tried to slide it through the middle. Now it's LaPointe. He's out there. That's a good sign. As he was taken down on that knee-to-knee -knee contact. And backdoor score! Holtz came in on the left-hand circle. Bango! It's 2 double. A lot of movement on this Michigan power play. Draper, right shot, steps off the right boards, and he finds another right shot set up for the one-timer, Stephen Holtz, deep in that far face-off circle. And Holtz looked like Brennan Brisson with his one-timer there, didn't he? I mean, that was a thing of beauty for the big man, Stephen Holtz. Boy, he started out so good last year, didn't he? You had, to, you had to pick up that injury. Well, he went to the uh, Vegas Knights, Golden Knights development camp. I'm sure that gave him some confidence. All right, Michigan still with the extra man for almost three minutes. Luca Fantilli as uh, Holt set it across. It goes in behind the goal over to the far boards. Draper tipped it back to the point. Now it's Fantilli. Luca looking for an opening. Skates into the left hand circle. He fires it. Saved by Torsha. He'll hang on. Face off coming up in the Lancers territory. Well, a situation where you get a five minute major in a Big Ten league game, you're going to keep coming back time and time again your top couple of lines, but I think Brandon Murado with all the power play time they're experiencing will have to use three here, three different lines. Samus gave his shot, and McGrory tried to turn it in, but the save was made and then cleared down the ice. So this puck basically has been in the Windsor zone the entire game so far. With the uh, 
third penalty. Now it comes out to center. Sam Escavich lines it over to Duke, Dylan Duke. And he got better and better as the season progressed last year, didn't he? He and sure did, although he was good right from the start. I thought he was Michigan's maybe most consistent freshman throughout the season. Wasn't that his first goal that he went around the net, stole the puck from the defenseman and tucked it in? I don't know. That kind of reminds me of the play he made in Penn State one night. Beautiful assist. Now here come the Lancers. Out center ice, shorthanded. That's Anthony Stefano, but it was offside at the uh, line. And we'll go back out center ice. Yeah, mental mistake there by the Lancers. When you don't get many chances, and you're on a potential two on one and you don't have the puck. Don't make it close. Don't even make it close where the linesman says, hey, it was close. I thought I'd better call it. Take it out of his hands. Hughes is out with uh, Jackson Hallam. Uh, TJ Hughes. No relation to Luke, by the way. That's probably good to say. We've had a lot of Hugheses in and out <laughs> here at Yost. And they've all been good. They've all been great. Here's a shot. Good save. Boy, he moved well with his uh, left leg that time. Torsha did. And back in the Michigan Territory. Seamus Casey waiting for the, uh, the folks to align, but he didn't like what he saw. Now he got tangled up a bit. Now here comes Hallam. Hallam over the line. The shot in front. Good save as Tarsha had to make two saves that time of the initial shot and the rebound. As uh, Cone comes down the ice for the Lancers, he's in behind the Michigan goal. They're shorthanded for 29 more seconds. As uh, Ciccolini will pick up the rebound, play it out center. Hallam comes in with uh, Brent Lee to Hallam in front. The shot, another shot. Oh, and then a cross check over the top of the goalie as uh, Jackson Hallam was taken down. And we got what? A face off in Lancer territory. And another penalty as the Lancer's captain, Mason Cohn, is going to get whistled, I think, for roughing or cross checking. One of the two, eh? Yeah, I think the call was roughing. So for 16 seconds, Michigan will have a two man advantage. Shots 11 to 2 in Michigan's favor. We played 12 minutes and 32 seconds. Wolverines have power play goals already for Mackey Samuskevich and Stephen Holtz. Portillo had a I don't know, something with his mask. He went over to the uh, bench. Ref checking with him, make sure that the mask was adjusted to his liking. Here's Fantilli. Oh, and that was Granowitz over on the left hand circle, but he fanned on it. Luca Fantilli to Stephen Holtz, who has a goal in the game on the power play. There's a shot by a stop, and he scores! From the face-off circle on the near side, and it's 3-0. Well, that clears the penalty box of Lancers. Major has expired, and 18 seconds into the penalty to the Windsor captain. It is Mark Estapa. Another one-timer from a sharp angle, and Torsha wishes he had that one back. He knows that the short side was not covered. Now the Wolverines on the four check. Trying to keep it in at the line. They do a good job. P Pearson did. Heaton played it to the corner. Biggest stop is in there. Like a freight train, but they were unable to keep the... Uh, Puck into the zone, and then Keaton Pearson did a great job of hustling back to get the puck in the zone in. And there's a nice pass through the middle to uh, Carradine. The uh, shot by Fantilli comes back out to the slot, and here come the Lancers. On the go, Brady uh, Pataki. He tried to play it in front for Grant Spence. That failed to click. And it failed to cook because Jay Karanen came back, put himself in perfect position. He was behind the Lancer, but was able to chop the puck off his stick just as the pass was received. 
Fantilli to Samus Gavich and the shot and they score again! And it might have been Dylan Duke that got the final tap in over the line for nothing. Well, Adam Fantilli, his puck skills are as advertised as he just turned the defenseman, Jason Fetter, he didn't know which way to go. He was he was grasping at straws, and the straws, <laughs> the stick and the puck, and Fantilli took it right to the net. They wound up banging it in. And you're right, Dylan Duke is the recipient of the goal for nothing. All right, we've got a timeout. We're going to step aside now, finally get a break in. We've had all those power plays. We. And uh, he likes to mix it up as a Brindley picks that puck out of the corner trying to play it back to Luca Fantelli but it was picked off. Now here comes Burt off the ice took a long shot that rebound will go to Brindley and Michigan will turn it back the other way McGrory. He uh, hands it off and it's sent all the way down the ice as the teams are changing. As Johnny Druskinis got on the ice there. He is uh, listed uh, as the uh, seventh defenseman for Michigan tonight. They've got an extra forward as well as they're dressing everybody but five, right, Fred? Yeah. Um, you're allowed to dress as many as you want in the exhibition season as well. Just you don't have all that much room on these benches, though. Probably back where they designed these benches when the players weren't so big, right? And the equipment <laughs> wasn't as big either. Now the teams are changing. 427 left of the first period of 4 nothing Michigan lead. Over the Windsor Lancers. Across the river, kind of by where the tunnel comes out. As it comes up to the blue line, Carolyn will keep it in. Michigan keeps it alive. Here's a shot. Ciccolini shot right on. Good save. Good glove save by Tosha. Just past the five minute mark here. Michigan with a 4 0 lead. First three goals on the power play. Samuskevich, Stephen Holtz, and Marcus Stappa. And then Dylan Duke with the most recent goal coming at the 13 49 mark. Face off win taken by the Lancers in behind the goal. They try to bring it into Michigan territory, but the Wolverines have been really good, not allowing any entrances into their zone. Now, here's a chance, LaPointe, shot. Torsha with a kick save. Rebound comes out and flipped out center. And Michigan will play it right back into Windsor territory with a 4 0 lead. And the Lancers want to change. They'll play it down to the Michigan zone. Down to our uh, left and then back out to center. Truscott flips it in for Nick Granowitz. Granowitz back for Truscott in the corner as the uh, puck comes up the near side. Now the Lancers will play it to center. Here's a chance now. And uh, Dorsey was trying to cut in between a pair of Wolverines, but they took care of him as the uh, puck comes out. As Skavitz got hammered. By Dobrich in his own zone, but got the puck out. That's one of those uh, hits you take uh, to get the puck out of your zone, right? Yeah. Take the hit to make the play is the cliche. Now here's Sam Escavich back the other way, played it back for Fantilli. Now Fantilli send it out in front, looking for a deflection from uh, Duke. It went wide of the goal. Steven Holtz way in from the defensive position. Plays it out in front as he dunked that puck loose. And here come the Lancers back the other way. That's Paradise on the other side. 
Here's a long shot, steered aside easily by Eric Portillo. Now Holtz fronts his man. Here's a Luca Fantelli to Sam Iskavich, and Michigan starts to move out of their own zone again. Adam Fantelli at center to brother Luca, who turns it back as Michigan was changing. A little over two minutes left in the first period, and a 4 0 Michigan lead. Here's a chance now. In comes Hintz. He shoots. Shot it high over the top of the goal, and it went down the ice as uh, Rutger McGordy will chase it along with Boyle. Far side as it goes. Pataki starts things out for the Lancers. Right to the Michigan line. Cone trying to catch up with it. Now Stefano didn't have a stick long enough as uh, Whale takes it back in his own zone for the Lancers. Down a minute and a half to go in the period. We have an offside call at the Michigan line. Well, the no most noticeable Wolverine so far in terms of the puck on his stick, Adam Fantilli. And, you know, he's got a little bit of everything to his game, including size. I mean, he's just 17 years of age, won't turn 18 for another 11 days, but he's already 6'2", 195. So he's got that man strength that coaches talk about already, perhaps. Puck back in the Lancers zone as we near the end of the first period. Michigan is out scoring four nothing and 16 to three shots on goal. Here's McGordy and center with Brindley in with Boyle. Boyle shot and uh, Tosha got a piece of that. It stayed in play. Now Nolan Boyle in that far left circle. Back to the point, Karen, and will hold it in. Then they go for a change on the D. Michigan keeps the puck alive down in Windsor territory. Here's a shot by Ciccolini, saved by Torsha. And uh, the Lancers just want to play it out center, relieve some pressure as Holmes comes in the Michigan zone. Well, Michigan's coverage on the back check has been great, hasn't it? Well, and, and that's the difference, really, between these two levels. It's the speed of the Big Ten game versus uh, what we're seeing from the Canadian opponent right now. Now back they come. Dorsey trying to cut it to the goal. Played it out in front. Now here's a chance. Ennis' is shot. That was tipped out in front. Now Dorsey kept it alive. Ennis again. His shot was blocked by Ciccolini. And his time is running down here in the period. Seamus Casey and Ciccolini come to center with nine seconds. They'll just feather it down into Windsor territory and that's going to be it for the first period. So Michigan will take a four to nothing lead into the locker room. Well a good start for the Brandon Michigan goes right to left here in the second with a 4 0 lead. Dovich, the big defenseman for the Lancers, was having trouble handling that puck deep in his own zone with the Michigan four check, which has been relentless. He'll try it again now. Up on the left wing to Cone. Cone coming in. He's got uh, Pataki with him, along with Stefano in front. And oh, Portillo made. A great save. That's the first tough one he's had. And it was from point blank range. As uh, Sam Escavich will dish it off the boards and down the ice. So just underway in the second period. 4 nothing Michigan. Seamus Casey sends it ahead. McGordy shoots. That changed directions. Boyle went into the net. And we'll have a faceoff. will come outside of uh, Windsor territory. Well, Seamus Casey, the young player from Fort Myers, Florida, 18 years of age and was very good with the national team program. And he has been impressive so far on the back end. Number 26 for Michigan. Unbelievable skater and his passes have been pinpoint perfect here in this exhibition contest. Now McGordy back in the Michigan territory between the circles and out center that quickly. Boy, they're moving that puck. 
none of that east and west stuff. They're going a lot of north and south stuff. As it goes back to Luca Fantilli, and he got one all the way through. And Torsha made a good save there on that screenshot. Now Stephen Holtz, who had a power play goal in the first period, holds it in with uh, Fantilli, and then he lost it, and it comes out center. Off the ice now, Holmes with the puck. And, uh, Holtz watches Holmes as they go into the corner. Down to our right on the near boards, deep in Michigan territory, a shot blocked now by Rutger McGordy. And then uh, Brindley will pick it up. He can move. He'll circle around, get some uh, forwards aligning at center as they're going to change here with a 4 nothing lead. Michigan is. Here's Ciccolini. Coming off the boards, gets the puck back. He waits. He finds Pearson. His shot. Kiernan's shot off the side of the goal of the rebound. And Ennis has the puck for the Lancers. And they'll bring it out center. Now Jackson Hallam goes to work. Blew a tire with down as he trying to change directions. Now T.J. Hughes ran his man off the puck. Got it back for the defense. Tipped ahead by Jackson Hallam. Deep into Windsor territory with a 4-0 Michigan lead. Here in the second period. Hallam trying to play it over for T.J. Hughes. That puck bouncing at center. Seamus Casey will grab it. And he'll throw it into Windsor territory. So three minutes are gone of the second period. A 4-0 Michigan lead. Now Casey got it ahead. Granowitz coming in. Granowitz to the net. Round the net. Trying to tuck it in. And to, so did the snapper. Here's another shot. Save. Wow, what a great save Tarsha made there with the splits. And back comes Burt the other way for Windsor. Truscott got a piece of him, and then Keaton Pearson got the puck. That's textbook, isn't it? One man takes the body, one takes the puck, right? Exactly what the Wolverines were working on the day I watched them in practice last week. Now big Marcus Stampe in behind the Windsor goal, trying to go to work there. He and Whale uh, really battling in behind that goal. And there's uh, three Wolverines below the goal line. And Windsor having uh, trouble getting it out. As uh, Johnny Deskinis will head off now as Michigan goes for a change with a 4 nothing lead. Duke knocked that pass away at center. Bartillo stops it in behind the goal and sweeps it up the near boards. Down to our right, here comes Michigan. Going uh, right to left. As Fantilli brings it in, he was poke checked. And back comes Pataki. He's going into the break. He shoots. And somebody got a stick on it. I think Driskinis got a stick on it. Deflects it out of play. Face-off coming up. Well, you mentioned Gavin Brindley earlier. His dad played at Miami for the uh, Red Hawks, although they weren't known as the Red Hawks then. But uh, he's 5'9", 170, and eligible for the next NHL draft because like Adam Fantilli, just 17 years of age, Gavin Brindley will turn 18 in four days. And he has been impressive for us as well. Spent time last year, Tri-City, the USHL, also the uh, National Team Development Program, and won a silver, silver medal with Team USA at the 2022 World Under-18 Championships. Coach Vasilini was back there, back then, right? Yeah, Bob yep, Motzko, yep. too. Bob Motzko, for three years, was the assistant coach under Mark Mazzolini. I remember one time they came into this building on a January 6th. They did. And it, I think it was Michigan's first game back from the uh, Christmas break and the GLI. And... Oh, Michigan went and just exploded. That's back when they had the, you know, the Morrisons and the, all those players. But Colts, you name it, 13 nothing was the score. That was Sean Richland's great story. The year that uh, Brandon Morrison won the Hobie, he said there was a game, and I'm not sure which one, that Brandon Morrison had a hat trick before Richie got on the ice. <laughs> that was probably it right there. Well, I tell you what, 
Sean Richland had a game-winning goal down in Miami and a two-to-one game when he was trying to get off the ice. I'll explain that in a second as uh, Brittley down there trying to wrap around. Boy, he really works hard, that kid. Yeah. And now they stole the puck. Here's Moyle in front. Oh, McGrody was taken down just as he's ready to pull the trigger and slam dunk one behind Tarsha. Now in comes Michigan again. And the pass in front. We've got a whistle and a penalty call coming. A uh, hooking call on the Canadians again. The Windsor Lancers will go in. No, Sean Richland, was, I think it was a 1-1 game, and he was going off the ice for a change, and he was out at center, and somebody was in the, uh, I think it was Blake Sloan, I'm not really sure who was, shot the puck to clear it down the ice so they could change. It hit the heel of Sean Richland's skate. The goaltender, anticipating the hard around, had left the net and went to stop it in behind, and that puck hit Richland's skate at center, went right in the net. And that was the game winner. He was sitting on the bench <laughs> probably when it went in, huh? <laughs> Hines in the box for Windsor and Michigan on the power play for a fifth time. So Michigan moving right to left across your dial here in the second period with a 4 nothing lead. He'll try to expand on it. Look at Sam Iskavich go. He's uh, cruising right into the zone all the way around the net. Back for Adam Fantilli. Nice little saucer pass to Truscott right on the tape. He gets it back and charges toward the net. Shoots. He was going over the uh, stick side, but missed the net. Now Truscott again. Waits, fakes, moves it over. Samus gave it. Shot score. Tipped by Duke in front. His second goal of the game. Boy, he likes that number 25. He does. And it's 5 nothing. Mackie Samuskevich with his third point of the game. Jacob Truscott will draw the other assist as Dylan Duke with that low center of gravity, 5'10", 181. But he is tough to move in front of the net. And he's got a little Thomas Holdstrom in him. He's not afraid to take a beating, pay the price to get those net front chances and that time he didn't have to hack or whack at a rebound Sam Muscovich just threw it at his stick and he deflected it in well there's Hallam shot over the top of the goal boy if there's one thing that you can notice right away with this we're going to call it a new team because it's 12 new players on it is uh, the fact that the speed I, I think it's as fast as you've seen any Michigan team, they are fast. Well, I'm going to reserve judgment out until uh, you see other competition, right? Maybe see the BU Terriers yeah. in a couple of weeks. I like Rick Zombo. like what he's done at Lindenwood, but still got a lot to prove as a first-year team. Lindenwood, a suburb of St. Louis area. Michigan had a nice trip in the St. Louis a few years back. There's an icing call on Windsor. That was one of the strange calls where they won in overtime. I think they break Nebraska Omaha as the play continues. They waved off that icing. And uh, now it's Torsha with the save. He'll hang on to it. But they had to take a view of the overtime goal from the opposite end of the rink to determine that it was in. Well, we just hope Dean Blaze isn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> Omaha's coach Dean Blaze, he's still, he's still a little upset with that one. I believe that icing was nullified because if Eric Portillo makes any effort, comes out of his crease to look like he's going to play the puck, it's keep playing. Now here's a pass out in front. They score! As... The Lancers have lit the lamp behind Eric Partillo. Mason Cohen went upstairs, and they have their goal first on the board, five to one now. Mason Cohn, the captain of the Lancers, 
from Hollywood, Florida, by the way. And he was the Far West Division Player of the Year last season. And it looks like Keaton Pearson is going to get a penalty. Uh, he was being called for a penalty on the rush by Mason Cohn. So it's two for slashing. And we should remind listeners the college rule different than the NHL rule that if a penalty is being called and the offending team gets scored upon, the offending team must still serve the penalty, which Keaton Pearson is going to start doing right now after Mason Cohn's goal at the 745 mark here in the second period. Well, we get to see a little penalty killing by Michigan, and they'll start with uh, who else but uh, Nolan Moyle, huh? And Marcus Stappa, yep. who really evolved in that role over the second half of last season. Stappa had trouble getting in the lineup in October, but by November, he was a mainstay. Now it's chipped up the board, so the Lancers, as Cohn got it, over for Pataki. Now it comes here on the near side. Back across to Cohn. Whale waits for it. Heinz back uh, comes along the boards. We'll play it back for Whale. And across, Cohn shot. That was blocked. There's Chuska diving in front of a slap shot to block it. And in comes Stefano. Now to Spence. Spence hands it off as they go to work now on this power play. They just scored. It's 5-1. And the Lancers will come out to the point. Here's a shot all the way through. Portillo somehow saw that puck, and he <laughs> looked behind himself. He wasn't sure he had it or not. Yeah, because that was a very acute change of direction. Shot came to the right point. Was tipped just past the hash marks. And deflected down toward the five hole on Eric Portillo. And that's why he looked back to see if anything had snuck through. Did you ever put the goalie pads on? Nope. <laughs> well, in, in street <laughs> hockey. <laughs> Never on the ice. I think it's amazing how these goaltenders can move with all that equipment on. And they move quicker side to side than anybody else on the team. All right, check on the penalty clock, 25 seconds. Federal have to chase it back down into Windsor Territories. We're near the halfway point of the second period in a 5-1 Michigan lead. And the Wolverines intercept, send it back down, change uh, penalty killers. Granowitz comes out to join the fray. And uh, up in the box is Keaton Pearson. Pearson comes out, and Michigan kills off the man advantage. Now Dorsey in his own zone with Fetter and Spence. Dorsey uh, lost that puck as LaPointe took it right away from him. Here's Marcus Stoppa waiting for the team to change. Now it's Luca Pantilli to Jay Carradin. Back to LaPointe. He shoots. Looking for a deflection there was wide of the goal. Luca Pantilli comes back out with uh, Carradin. And here's LaPointe with a shot. Rebound. That was sent by Granowitz, but it was stopped also by the goaltender, Nathan Tarsha. He made a couple of dandy saves right there. 28 shots by Michigan to seven for the Lancers as uh, the Wolverines, uh, Jackson Hallam, hands off to uh, Luca Fantilli. Didn't like what he saw. He'll back it back out to the blue line. Now he finds Holtz. He comes down the slot with a shot. Rebound came bouncing out in front. Cleared, though, by Grant Spence, and he gets uh, taken down as uh, Holtz charges into the Lancer zone. A 5-1 Michigan lead with nine minutes to go. Wow. Draper took his man down in the heap. No penalty call as uh, Fantilli at center ice plays it in the middle. Here's uh, T.J. Hughes. He waits. He waits. He plays it out in front. Looking for a redirect, but uh, Draper couldn't get to it. Back on center ice. 
Here come the Canadians in there. That's the Windsor Lancers, and they couldn't uh, make that play work as it comes back out center. Five to one, Fred. Four Michigan. power play goals, the yep. difference. Yep. And a nice thing call on Michigan will go down by Eric Portillo. Now, here's a question. Are you allowed to change goaltenders on an icing? You can't change players, That's but right. can you change goaltenders? I don't think you can. We'll see, because well, Noah West is climbing over the boards. Are they going to let him change? The answer is yes. I just thought I'd bring that up. So Noah West comes in. They get some duty. Saw a couple of games last year. Now he made a save on a shot that came from a wild angle from below the goal line. And back to Lancer territory. Now Pataki. He passes it out to Stefano. Stefano's shot high in the air off the uh, Netting high up. Well, and that's uh, college hockey wide. I think a lot of teams had a lot more Canadians, but with the evolution of USA hockey and uh, the job that they have done growing the game, now it's uh, the majority of players are U.S. nationals, and uh, I think Canada is still like 25, 30 percent maybe, but the majority of players are homegrown now. And what, a third of the National Hockey League is uh, college players, is it not? Yeah. Michigan had more alum in the NHL last season than any other U.S. college. I think 22 was the number. Now Nolan Boyle comes in. Hands it off. Casey back to Trump Scott. Here's uh, Brindley. He was opened up for the pass, and they score! That came off the end boards. I'm not sure who got that. But McGrordy was there, Moyle was there, and one of them got it in. Oh, Casey. Yeah, Seamus Casey, who, with his puck skills, skating ability, he can almost play that rover position a la Luke Hughes. And he was up standing right beside the net. Shot was wide, came off the backboards, and Seamus was there to to jam it in for a 6-1 Michigan lead. No West comes out to play the puck. And we're seven minutes uh, left here in the second. And they, I'm sure that the teams keep a total of time of possession of the puck, but I like to see it because Michigan's had the puck most of the night. Now here's uh, Carolyn trying to pass one off the end boards. And the save made by the new goaltender, Lund Cornish, who's also come into the game. Yeah, we uh, should talk a, talk a little bit about Noah West, who transferred last season to Michigan when Robert Morris uh, dropped their program. It's since been reinstated. Derek Schooley's team will resume play next year, but he did get into two games, did Noah West. Eight saves versus Minnesota December 3rd and three saves in relief at Ohio State December 11th, but otherwise it was mostly Eric Portillo's show and Eric started every game and stayed healthy. That was the key. And will be another key this season because they might need him even more. Certainly in the uh, early going. Yep. We're just going to add that proviso. Huh? <laughs> now out to center ice they come. Mason Cohn has a goal in the game. And he almost had another one. All right, check it. That was Stefano with the shot and a save by West. And we got a penalty call on the Wolverines for a slash, I think. Ouch. Mm -hmm. 
Mark Estapa in the box, two for slashing. Stefano stopped. Uh, U.S. College, of course, you either have to wear a full shield or a full cage. And the Windsor players all wearing half visors, which they're allowed to do and allowed to do when they cross the border and play Canadian Are they ever going to change that rule? I don't think so. I think it's a, it's a liability issue more than anything else. There have been initiatives after initiatives over the years, but I can't see it happening, Al. Health and welfare of the, the student athlete. Like, they ever gonna go back to leather football helmets? <laughs> Not likely. So Michigan shorthanded second time tonight. And it's sent down the ice. Dralowitz and Ciccolini. All the penalty killers for uh, Coach Nahr as the uh, puck goes down into the Lancer zone. They'll start it out there as they come out to center ice. Now Hunter Holmes passes it off to uh, Darcy, the other penalty call coming on Michigan. Hook, I think. As uh, Holmes grabs it. There goes Lund Cornish to the bench, the goaltender. Holmes has the puck, sends it to the corner. Now back on top, Fenner has it. They try to play it out in front. It's touched, though, by Brindley, and they're going to whistle it down. A holding call in Michigan, and they'll be short two men now. Yeah, the captain, Nolan Moyle, headed to the box, and Windsor will enjoy a two-man advantage for 58 seconds. Wonder how many Windsor fans crossed the border to get to this game. Uh, There's a nice crowd all here. The, all the border restrictions have been lifted now between oh, Canada and the U.S., so you can cross freely regardless of Vax status. How was the fishing this summer? Awesome. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like fried perch that was caught that morning. Quite a few walleye in that lake too, isn't there? Yeah. It's tasty too. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go out at midnight. They're usually sleeping by the <laughs> here's another goal by the Lancers. That was set up really nice. And it was sent over to Brady Hintz, and he just rifled it home upstairs. And a power play goal makes it 6 2. Yeah, with a numerical advantage, five skaters to three. They sent it from the slot down low on the left side, where Hines was positioned for the one timer. And he made no mistake. Short side, blocker side, shoulder on Noah West. Well, still a minute and 33 left in the uh, penalty as Sam Escavich took a long shot. And to flex on the play, it'll stay inside Windsor territory. As Dakota Lund Cornish is in that net. Now for the Lancers, as we mentioned. Michigan still looking at a minute 31 on the Nolan Moyo holding minor. So it's Adam Fantilli and Mackie Samuskevich out up front in a penalty killing role. So Brandon Arado showing us quickly. He's not afraid to use his best offensive players on the PK. Puck all the way down deep in the Michigan territory. A minute and 10 on the Windsor power play. As home shoots. And uh, a save made as it went right through the goal mouth. Fetter played it back along the point. Now Holmes on the right-hand side. Top of the right circle, skates toward the net, plays it low, spends his shot, and it was blocked by Noah West and sent down the ice by his defense. Now we have an offside call. That was an easy call for the linesman. They were changing inside the blue line. Well, the Wolverines cleared the puck down the ice, and all four of the penalty killers headed for the Michigan bench after being trapped deep for a long time. The goalie moved the puck up quickly, and Steve Holtz with a good, quick decision to say, hey, one of us better stay out here to guard ex <laughs> against exactly that. And Holtz was at his own blue line, even though it was offside. Keith Pearson 
Won a race to the puck against Stefano, sends it all the way down the ice. 34 seconds left of the power play for the Lancers as they drop it back, looking for a speed up the middle. Mason Cohen, Pataki, Stefano, their number one line. Now they'll play it in front. Oh, and he had an open net and missed it. Brady Hitz did. Boy, they had it set up too, didn't they? Now the penalty is over. Boyle comes out. Michigan at full strength. Jackson Hallow in behind the goal. Back pass. Out to T.J. Hughes over the right circle. Back toward the point. That went outside and out of the offside. Well, you talked about Jackson Hallam. Freshman, 20-year-old freshman. An older freshman, which you need. Out of Egan, Minnesota, 20 years of age. And was drafted in the third round by the Vegas Golden Knights back in 2020. That was the draft during COVID. And... Uh, he was drafted. The draft took place during a weekday, and they made the announcement at Egan High School that Jackson Hallam was now a member of the Vegas Golden Knights organization. That was pretty cool over the high school PA system. <laughs> now Fantilli, Luca Fantilli, way up in the play, dropped the pass back, and Ciccolini shot. And a good save by London. Uh, Cornish says he was left uh, all alone with the Ciccolini about 15 feet away. So good reaction by the Lancer goaltender to keep it 6-2 with a little over two minutes left of the second. Oh, there's a penalty. And uh, maybe two. That was uh, checking from behind into the board, so you never know how they're gonna call this. Could be five, huh? They're gonna yep. go look at it, huh? Yeah, there's a huddle. And I'm sure the Windsor coach, Kevin Hamlin, is saying, hey, we got five in the first period. And the referees, Sean Fernandez and Jake Rakuki are gonna take a look at this hit by the freshman Defenseman Johnny Driskinis. Well, as good as the first period was for Michigan with the three power play goals, uh, I'm sure when the coaching staff, head coach Narado, Bill McCult, Rob Rassi, go to the dressing room this intermission, uh, too many penalties, guys. We're, 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 not, we're not playing smart. We're not thinking smart. There have been stick infractions, there's been holding, and then this could be the worst of the bunch. Remember, exhibition game, regular season game, doesn't matter. If you get a, a, a game disqualification, you're sitting the next game. And it never used to be that way, was it? Right, you could uh, yeah. you could escape. Well, that, that was a long time ago, because when I started with the CCHA, and that was in uh, 2001, if you got a, a DQ in an exhibition game, you had to, to serve it. And it's two for boarding against Driskinis. Well, I was surprised. I get on the referees a lot for the reviews and how long they are. But the average review, what did, what did uh, Steve Piotrowski tell minute, us? A minute eight. A minute, eight seconds. And there were 70 reviews. I think he said 70 reviews in the Big Ten last season. I thought he said 107. But <laughs> he said the Michigan led of them. <laughs> well, the, and, and they led. They only had nine, so. <laughs> so it had to be seven. It had to be, I yeah. think, seven. Yeah. So the Wolverines penalty killing again. So they had a lot of practice on the power play in the first period, a lot of penalty killing here in the second. Not by design. So the Lancers will center up again. Stefano 
Trying to play it back for Cohn. Now Cohn has it. Takes a look. Goes back to the point man. That's Whale. Whale has Hines on this side. Whale waits. Hines with the puck. Shoots. Blocked by Jacob Truscott. And here's another shot. That off the stick of Stefano, but it was wide of the goal. They tried to go up top over the uh, glove hand of Austin Noah West. As they go to the last minute of play of the second, Michigan on the long change. As the puck goes back towards the point, Wales shot, kind of tic-tac-toed around in front of there. Now he's got nice wrist shot, but he missed the net. Now they'll bring it back on top again. Lancers trying to cut the lead to three as the puck will go around the boards and down the ice with 30 seconds left. So time for one more rush for the Lancers, but it's stolen by Marcus Stampa. Stampa trying to break toward the goal along with uh, Jackson Hallam as they disrupt that attempt out of the zone. Nine seconds left. Pass way up to Dorsey. Now to Holmes, back to Dorsey. But look at Jackson Hallam on both ends of the ice coming back to take that puck away and setting it down as the period expires.
you know, there are certain schools that have a reputation. Uh, they don't have to recruit. They just select. That's not the case. Though. Minnesota, Boston College, Michigan. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, the Blue Bloods all with uh, yeah. new coaches this year, huh? Yeah. Isn't that something? Now back down the ice into Michigan territory. Wolverines come on center. And the shot directed. Lund Cornish with the save. And a face up coming up in enemy territory. Well, uh, here's the uh, synopsis through 40 minutes. 6 2 Michigan. Wolverines outshot. Wins are 17 3 in the first period, 12 9 in the second. It was 4 0 after one. Each team with a couple of goals in the second. Michigan's power play 4 for 5. Wins are 1 for 4. 11 different Wolverines have at least a point in this game. Here's a shot. That uh, came in from the uh, point from uh, Luca Fantilli. As the uh, play comes up by the Michigan or the uh, Lancer line. And uh, Dobrich has had enough of uh, Keenan Draper. Draper all over him. Relentless. Could this be a grind line, perhaps? As it comes out center and bounces in the Michigan territory. Well, we know how important Van Wy, Moyle, and usually Morgan were last season in that grind line role. And uh, the name itself would be a perfect fit for a grind line, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Now comes uh, out Darcy. Dancing in the Michigan zone. Pulls up, plays it down in behind the goal. And now Stephen Holtz did like uh, what he saw, so he reverses the puck the other way, hands it off. And Seamus Casey plays it down the ice. It'll end up in the possession of Lund Cornish, the goaltender, and he'll hang on to it. Well, a busy October for the Wolverines. What, nine games? With uh, the college schedule starting on the first of the month. And that means five weekends to work with. Not very often, well, I guess once every six, seven years that the official start day is also a Saturday. And of course, Wolverines will make a, a trip to an old haunt in a few weeks up to Lake Superior. And you're going with us, right? Kathy Abel Arena, yeah. Another stick infraction being called here against the captain Nolan Moyle so a power play now for the Lancers to try to cut this four goal Michigan lead six to two here early in the third Michigan defending down to our left now is Cone Stefano Pataki all tucked down inside that uh, circle they win the draw. Whale has the puck. He shoots. Was blocked by Estepa and is cleared down into Lancer territory. As Estepa, without a stick, took the puck away. And now he'll get quite a round of applause for his second effort without a stick. And he comes back the other way, picks it up, and gets back in the play. Now, backdoor feed. They come out front. Here's a shot. Block. A stop will block that one. And then Jackson Hallam will play it down the ice. As Sam Escavich comes out with Fantilli. This is that duel you were talking about. They can kill penalties too. Yeah. Well, Red Berenson was never afraid to use his best offensive players in penalty killing role, was he? No, he wasn't. A lot of times he would see Kevin Porter out there by Brendan Morrison. 
Oh, here's a steal. Fantilli on a breakaway. He goes in and he's stopped by Lundkonis. All right, Fantilli checked behind to make sure he had no traffic catching up to him and took his time, went for the deep. And yeah, next guy behind him was Mackie Samuskevich. He had a full zone to work with of clear space. Sometimes that's too much. Overthinking what you're going to do. Now Whale trying to stick in all the way through. And a good hustle by the Lancers to keep it in. But this uh, number one group has been out there a long time. They're going to be tired now they head on. And here comes Moyle out of the box. In on the right hand side. And take it away. Out center rice. Comes the defenseman Arsenault. And he'll tap it into Michigan territory. So a 6 2 game. Michigan on top here on this lone uh, exhibition uh, game. And an icing called on the Wolverines will go down by Noah West. Yeah, here's what the rest of October looks like. For the Wolverines next weekend two home games Friday and Saturday against the Lindenwood Lions out of the St. Louis area one of the new programs in the D1 ranks then the 14th and 16th or yeah the 14th and 16th the BU Terriers are here then it's up to Sault Ste. Marie Taffy Abel Arena then the final weekend of the month so home and home with Western Michigan that'll be much anticipated I'm sure oh especially with all the brouhaha last year about the game that was canceled and all that stuff we had to read and watch and listen to. Here is a chance for Cohen. He waited a little bit too long that time. The Wolverines were allowed to recover and they blocked that pass across. Now Cohen again. He's on the ice a lot. Stefano back to Dovich and his uh, shot steered away by Noah West. Came off the boards now as Dovich Trying to react to that puck, keep it in. They do. Stefano now. Bataki in behind the goal. The Lancers going to work now. Michigan Territory have the puck and they score. That's a code with the goal, I believe. Or wait a second, it's not in the net. Cohen says it's in. Referee says it's not. Noah West says I got it my glove. <laughs> Wolverines gave the puck away behind their own net. Noah West was looking to his left. Mason Cohn brought it out the other side and thought he had tucked it in. He skated away celebrating a goal. Wolverines arrived on the scene and said that's not in. And the referee agreed, although he's going to go take a look at it. Well, for every shot on goal the Wolverines have this season, Michigan Dairy Farmers will donate a gallon of milk to the Maize and Blue Cupboard, which ensures that members of the University of Michigan community who need financial or physical assistance receive proper nourishment on a daily basis. Getting Coming first look at the replay here. I don't think that was ever in. No. Noah West saw Mason Cohn celebrating, looked behind him, didn't see a puck, and it was it was trapped where the pad comes down and covers the skate. And the goalie's leg is against the ice that forms a little covey. But Michigan's going to have a whole, what, uh, four weeks off over the Christmas break, right? Yeah, by not participating this year in the Great Lakes Invitational, which is going to be held at Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids. They'll come back and not have to jump right into regular season action. They'll play their annual game against the U.S. National Program, I believe, January 6th. Well, I think the problem with the uh, with the GLI, and my thoughts are, is that you, you, you have to share the... Little Caesars Arena with the Pistons and the Red Wings and both want to play around the holiday and so does that tournament. So they were putting the GLI, we were there at 11 o'clock in the morning uh, on New Year's Day playing Michigan State and there was a couple thousand people there. And uh, that, that's not, 
That's not a uh, a moneymaker for Little Caesars Arena by any man. And there's, you know, the fans were all watching the football game. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, they kept trying to find a solution. Olympia Entertainment just couldn't come up with one. And by going into the new venue, I mean, at Joe Louis Arena, some of the big acts didn't want to play the Joe anymore. So there was more availability, not anymore. Well, here's Casey all the way to score. That was almost too easy. Seamus Casey with the goal. He just walked right in. He was on a stroll. Well, da, 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 da. <laughs> well, there were net front players for the Wolverines. And they were being checked, and nobody picked up Sean Casey walking in from the right point. And he showed his quick hands and sick mitts, and just went deep backhand upstairs, 7 2. Casey's second point of the game. All right, here's a steal. Brindley out in front. He played it for Ciccolini. Now Brindley working hard, kicking up that puck, battling his way, and he came out with it. Now back to Stephen Holtz, flips it up for Ciccolini, backdoor feed to Brindley. Brindley again in that far circle. Taken away by the Lancers, though, as they now trail 7-2 to, to Michigan, 13 and a half left in this uh, exhibition game. Now Whale at center, he can move, he goes in over the line, and he was poke checked. And now here's a race after the puck. Jackson Hallett and Brindley come in 2 on Oh, and they missed the net. They went back and forth and missed the net, and it was cleared out center. That time they got in a little bit too deep, I think. Well, I think the pass was telegraphed, too, and the goalie just knew he had to get the leg down. Now, uh oh Brindley got hit in the corner. And uh, I think we're going to have another penalty. Brindley is uh, checking for something on his face. Maybe he got a high stick up there. Yeah, he was just turning to look back to see where the puck was. Stefan Dobrich. And Dobrich heads to the box. Shots on goal here, 37-13 in Michigan's favor as they look for another power play goal. Well, they won't have to work on the power play this week. Well, <laughs> they're doing that today. Here's Sam Escavich in with Adam Fantilli. Backhand shot right in the, right in the uh, glove hand of uh, Lund Cornish. He'll hang on. Well, they've got four power play goals, and those have come without their power play quarterback, Luke Hughes, in the lineup. Luke being given a maintenance day, according to Coach Brandon Narado, coming off that All American. Fabulous freshman season, 17 goals, 39 points for Luke Hughes. Ethan Edwards not dressed tonight. Mazer not dressed, Hughes. And uh, their new goaltender, Tyler Shea, he's not dressed either. You, li you like that idea that we're not going to dress three goalies. We're just going to dress two at home, you know. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, I'd have to drill down on that a little bit with Brandon Arado. I mean, makes sense. You only need two. Do you take three on the road, though, just in case somebody gets sick or hurt? You know, if, it, if it's at home, a goalie gets sick or hurt, you know, the other guy is, is right He's here. There. But yep. if you're at Penn State or somewhere like that, it becomes a bit of an ordeal, especially on game day bring somebody in so 
Brandon did not say they wouldn't travel three, he just said they would only dress two. Out through the middle. Keenan Draper with the puck. Drops it off. Give and go. Trying to get it back for Jackson Hallam in front. On a give and go uh, between uh, Draper and, and Ciccolini. As a uh, shot by Casey. Goes to TJ Hughes. Now to Hallam. Hallam over the far circle. He finds Ciccolini. Nice pass there. And the shot went over the top of the goal. Now Casey again. Here's uh, Ciccolini. In behind the goal. And here's a shot saved by Lund Cornish. She'll hang on. It's good to see Ciccolini back out there. Boy, you talk about somebody that's had some bad luck with injuries. Yeah, played 26 games as a freshman. 24 as a sophomore. Got in just four last season, so a young man that will have an opportunity should he desire to come back again next season. Eric Ciccolini. I just showed a picture of Rob Brassi along with the Brandon Dorado side by side on the bench down there. And of course they, they played against each other here as we were talking to Brandon about. We have a nice in call. We'll go back to Windsor back when Northeaster wasn't all that good. Michigan was really good. And they came in here and they split with Michigan. Almost won twice. And, he, and Brandon said, yeah, he keeps reminding me of that. <laughs> Coming home to Michigan from Shelby Township is Rob Rassi. It was back in uh, October of 06. And uh, 07 season. Now here's Moyle. Coming in over the line, driving toward the net. Looking for a return pass from uh, LaPointe, but it was blocked. So the Lancers will start out of their own zone with a long pass up. Oh, that would have been offside, so St Stefano had to let it go. Now Keith Pearson on the move. And over the Lancers line, still has the puck. Back to Boyle, cross ice feed. There's Holt, shot blocked. But Brindley's there to uh, gather it in, trying to go across ice. But it was broken up by the Lancers, and they'll come back quickly in the Michigan territory with Shaw. But he was stopped dead in his tracks, and the puck sent all the way back into Lancers territory. And now they send a long one down the ice in the Michigan zone. Check on the clock. Nine and a half minutes left in this game. And a 7-2 Michigan lead. Now the near boards, they, it's going to be a nice in call, it looks like. And it will. A couple of two-goal scores in this game for Michigan. Sophomore winger Dylan Duke, who scored 10 as a freshman, has a pair, and the freshman defenseman Seamus Casey with two goals as well. Faceoff win by the Wolverines, Casey. Over for Jacob Truscott. Nice move there. And he flips it oh, across that uh, slot area. Samus Gavich trying to. We went in there. Now he hands on a penalty call. They're not going to get it as uh, the Lancers come back down the ice. Now the Lancers steal the puck again. Here's a shot wide of Noah West as uh, Dobich goes down to the corner. The uh, big defenseman for the Lancers was trying to get to the goal that time, but he was stopped. Here's Samus Gavich all by himself now. Back up the ice into Windsor territory, but it was knocked off the puck. And the Lancers sent it back to the Michigan zone. Michigan changing with a five goal lead. And it goes out center now. John Jeskinis 
T.J. Hughes tying up at center. And shovel deemed to Michigan territory. Noah West comes out to the corner to play the puck. Then it's uh, tipped to him for Eric Ciccolini. He'll chase Whale down deep into the Windsor Lancer territory. And Whale comes uh, racing out center ice. Trying to get a pass across, but he fanned on it. T.J. Hughes picks it up. Over for Johnny Deskinis at center ice. His pass missed everybody. It goes deep into the zone. T.J. Hughes cross check across the back of the Lancer uh, defender, but he didn't get a penalty. And here's uh, Stefano. Stefano long shot off the chest of Noah West. Rebound, and it goes to uh, Cohen. Cohen to Pataki, back to Whale. Whale on the left point, goes to the far side. Here's a long shot. West kicks that one out of there. Seven minutes remaining and a 7 2 Michigan lead. Now Draper trying to tip it past the defense, but in come the Lancers again. But it's an icing call. They missed that long outlet pass. Well, two Fantillies making their Michigan debut. Adam, the much heralded pro prospect for the 2023 draft, but Luca Fantilli. Chicago Steel captain last season, an outstanding player in his own right. And this wasn't a case, Al, of getting Luca Fantilli on the team, hoping you can get Adam. They, I mean, Luca's a legit D1 defenseman. Indeed. Here's a long shot that Lund Cornish will hang. <laughs> Seven to Michigan. And uh, I guess what's good about these games is you're playing somebody else for a change, right? Yeah. You talk about getting up to game speed, which Michigan did in a hurry, but yeah, it's just competition other than the guys you're used to, your own teammates. Oh. Granowitz taken in. You can hear it all the way up here. Estapa back in behind the goal. Estapa, Draper, Granowitz, the line right now. As uh, Brandon Hirano looks on from the bench. Here's a shot in there. And uh, Lund Cornish made the save. That's cleared down the ice. That'll be icing. Well, we were talking before about Mike and Tyler Reynolds. Tyler, they come up and visit last year. When Tyler was just a little, little guy, he was over here and, and uh, Nolan DeYoung was the captain of Michigan and after the warm-ups, he flipped him a puck over the, you know, and, and Tyler come up with his dad to visit up here in the broadcast booth. And here was Nolan DeYoung. And Tyler's eyes got as big as saucers and said, that's Nolan DeYoung. <laughs> I got that puck still. Here's a shot out of play. It's great how these players interact with those young fans and especially when they let them come out of the ice, get the autographs and that. Yeah, to a, to a youngster like that, a hockey player is a hockey player, whether he's a Detroit Red Wing or a Michigan Wolverine or a Minnesota high school player. It's just so great to see their role models, whether they know it or not. Well, Tyler comes to Ann Arbor to hockey school every summer, and I'm sure he wants to put that block M on someday. Here's a shot that went over the top of the goal. Wolverines will keep it in. It goes down to the corner. Wild goes in, holds up. Has to not get a penalty. And the Lancers play it right in the middle dangerously, and it's tipped down the ice in the Michigan territory down to our left. 7 to 2 Michigan. Here's uh, Seamus Casey playing it out center ice. Ooh, a hit for. Rutger McCrory following up is Moyle. Moyle got it in behind the goal. Now there's going to be a penalty call, tripping call on the Lancers. Michigan's pulled the goalie. Here's Fantilli's shot. So Noah West on the bench, extra attacker, shot, save. Michigan keeping possession until it's touched by Ennis. And they'll have another power play coming. Be like power play number eight.
Well, power plays can really wear out a team, can't they? Well, sometimes in an exhibition game, you're not as thrilled when it turns into a special team situation because you're trying to establish what players can do for you. And uh, yeah, it's great to see Adam Fantilli out for every power play, but you know, if you're going even strength, you get a better gauge of you know what the Philip LaPointe's and Gavin Brindley's and TJ Hughes of the lo lineup are doing too. Dylan Duke trying to get it back for Sam Iskavich, who mans that right point, but it's taken away by Cohen, and he comes up the ice. Trying to cut to the net. Oop. He held up, though, as not to run into Noah West. Now back the other way comes Michigan. Fantilli. Oh, he found Duke out in front all alone, but that puck went over the top of his stick as the Lancers clear it down the ice. Fantilli tried to put a little sauce across to Dylan Duke, but it was hot sauce. He couldn't handle it. <laughs> Now Tuska drops it back for Adam Fantilli. Four minutes left of the game. A little over a minute left of the man advantage, but the Wolverines will set up in Lancer territory. Here's Fantilli shooting, and it was blocked out of play off the netting. Faceoff will stay inside. Well, I'm looking forward to that Boston U series. Yeah, with Jay Pendle. Former NHLer taking over. That is all the matter. All these guys that I used to broadcast for when they were players are not the coaches, and their kids are playing now. <laughs> uh, I know you probably feel the same. Here's uh, Ciccolini playing it low in front. Shot by Brindley went wide. When Ch we when we start doing the grandkids, Al, might be time to <laughs> put the mic away. <laughs> Now, Estampa, back to Casey. Ciccolini waiting for a pass. He was opened up, but it never got there. And uh, Eric's looking good. Here's a shot went wide. He's skating well. And again, all the injuries that kid has had to endure. Yeah, he's missed a lot of hockey. And here he is. Ciccolini flips that uh, puck to Brindley around the boards of TJ Hughes waiting on the left hand circle, but it jumped over his stick and down the ice it comes. Wolverine's trying to get back. Look at Ciccolini in the back check. Great job by Eric getting back on the play to help out his defense as the Wolverines try to break it out of their own zone. The Lancers play right back in. Well, the penalty's over. Michigan's on shot of 45 19 in this game. They lead seven to two with two and a half to go. Pass up to Hughes. Ciccolini trying to get off the ice. Michigan wisely not putting another player on there. It would have been too many men. As uh, TJ Hughes goes in behind the goal, kicked at it. But the Lancers come out with it. Down the ice it goes. Carolyn taking a look. Around the net he goes, using it as a shield. Up to Marcus Stampa. He's got Granowitz with him on the right-hand side. Just Skinnis jumps up to the play. Ahead for Granowitz, who plays it all in front to a stop a shot. And the save by Lund Cornish as the puck goes to the corner. Here's a stop again. Lund Cornish looks behind him. And he gets some help from his defense, clearing it out of there. And it's off to the side of the goal. Whistle and a faceoff. Now, when you say Marcus Stapa was all alone, we do mean all alone. There wasn't a player in a dark jersey within 30 feet of him. And he left shot, tried to go locker just inside the post on the Windsor netminder. Here's a little feather pass by Granowitz, who hustled after that uh, puck. After they didn't win the draw, and he ended up controlling it. Almost had a scoring chance. As it comes back in the middle, and a good 
Back check by Estapa broke that play up. Now Granowitz on the move with Marcus Estapa, two on one. Gets it back to Granowitz, he scores! That was a dandy of a play there. And a backhand shot between the legs, eight to two. Well, Nick Granowitz limited to 19 games last season before his season was shut down. Takes a perfect feed. He's in all alone. Goes from forehand on the right side to the backhand and tucked it between the legs of the netminder. Little give and go. Stoppa back to Granowitz and he lost his footing on the deep, but the puck still went into the net for the 8-2 lead with a minute to go now. Now Seamus Casey back down the other way. That puck right on the goal line. Held out by Lund Cornish. Face off coming up. Face off with 52 seconds left, one by Michigan. Seamus Casey's shot wide of the goal. Off to the side was Moyle. Now Dylan Duke. It's Casey again. Boy, we, we called his name a lot tonight. Well, and Brandon Arado has got Duke and Casey out there in this final shift because they both have two goals. That's old school. Go for the Hattie. Comes the Lancers. The penalty over. 18 seconds remaining. And Arsenal trying to play out in front. Great play there. Boy, Jack Jackson Hallam has been all over the ice. Now Moyle coming down. He got dumped and went down. But that's all the time we have. So it's for real next time. We